everyone, Matt from Model Minutes here and welcome to this video where I take a look inside the Airfix HQ. So, come take a look with me. So it's about 9am, uh, it's 9am on the dot actually, on the watch, uh, on July the 24th and I'm about to head up to Margate. Uh, it's a bit of a grey, misly day and uh, as you can see the Garden Railway has you know completely overgrown and it's all very wet um so yeah let's get in the car and see what this uh event is going to be like i i'm not gonna lie i actually have like no real um i don't know what to expect i don't know what is going to happen i sort of have an idea but um i guess we'll have to wait and see so let's get this show on the road But before I can get there, I need to make a slight detour. So I've just come to pick someone up because we live quite close. And look who it is. It's Hi. James from LPJ Models. Road trip. Road trip. <laughs> and with that, James and I made the six hour trek all the way to Margate. We even had time to pop in for a flying visit at the Fleet Air Art Museum. Sadly, they wouldn't let us film inside. We did get to see some other sites whilst we were traveling though as well. But after a few stops and some considerable time in the car, we finally got to Margate. Doing, uh, feel like proper YouTubers. Doing like a road trip, amazing. There we go. Oh, look at this. Travel Lodge. Got my free tea and coffee there. Probably just drink the tea. TV, nice. Back room, there's me. Hello, excited. And what a glorious view. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to use that. After a spot of dinner, we decided that we pop into actual Margate to have a look around and record some of the sights. And then, with the sight scene, it was time to go to bed, ready for what the next day might bring. So it's the next day, today's the day, we're going to go and see the FX slash Hornby uh, Centre. And um, not going to lie, didn't sleep too well last night. So for some reason, when I came in, that was on. Yep, the heating was on. Now, bearing in mind that we have had possibly one of the hottest summers on record with temperatures reaching into like the mid 30s to the 40s. Uh, yesterday wasn't that hot. It was around 30 -ish degrees. Um, but why the heating was on, I have no idea. And to add insult to injury, the windows only open that far because they've got a lock on it. So yeah, last night was not a comfortable sleep. But anyway, Hopefully the day will be better. So uh, let's go meet James, go get some breakfast and see what we can do with this Hornby thing. This is a first for Airfix. Uh, whilst we've held events here before with groups of uh, with modelling groups, uh, we've never opened our doors to YouTube YouTubers in particular. 
After a quick welcome from Dale, who was the head of the Airfix brand, we were given a presentation on how the product development team choose which kits are going to be manufactured. There are a variety of different criteria which they covered, and to be honest, it's quite a complicated subject. Um, which is always really hard. Probably one of the hardest choices we face is what do we get rid of? So are there any gaps in the market? Is there anything that's really obvious, or maybe not so obvious, that no model company's done in ages? You don't just want to release a product by itself um, with nothing around it, because people like to build collections. They like to build similar subjects. There are rule breakers. There are things that don't fit the mold, things that we shouldn't do, or, or on paper it looks like we shouldn't do. The Swift is maybe an example of that. You know, the, the release schedule after that, there isn't one, it's a single release. Previous sales, we have to look at what has sold before, what's gonna sell again, what's gonna make us the money. And yes, there's a Spitfire up there because they make us lots of money, they sell a lot, people enjoy Spitfires. So whilst not everybody gets the kits from Airfix that they always want to see, it was quite interesting and eye-opening as to the many different factors which influence the company's decisions. We were then shown another presentation on a bit more research and the sort of product development timeline. And then we were shown how the 3D scanning works and Airfix use this to help inform their actual kits. They don't use just 3D scanning, they will use other reference materials, but they do try and make a good balance. We were also given an exclusive look at the new Airfix Avro Anson in 148 scale, including a first look at the box art and even some test samples which were ready to view. For me personally, I was very impressed with the quality of these test shots. Five Andrew Squadron actually did a lot of field mod and they put some extra machine guns in the cabins and we've included those in the kit. Um, and then with that, it was time for lunch. After lunch, I was given the opportunity to have a look round the old factory building. It's kind of used as a warehouse for some of the old tools at the moment, but it was interesting to take a look at these old tools. Not all of them are completely serviceable, but some may well make their way into being used for production models in the future. Hurricane. Uh, Stuka. Oh, Hurricane Mark IV. That's the first kit I ever built. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, that's quite nice. I said that is the tooling that made the first kit I ever built from Airfix. Amazing. What's uh, the likelihood of them coming back as a vintage classic? We'd have to see. Debatable. I know. Right. Obviously, the standard standard answer is we can't comment on yes, uh, future yeah, releases. Yeah. We have original instructions. Oh wow! Look at that. So these are all the old transparencies. Mm -hmm. The one twenty four Spitfire. 1970. Which is when it came out, 1970. So there are parts which these drawings went on to make, which are sitting in my stash at the yeah. moment. Um, a number of sections to our trade showrooms, obviously the public are not, uh, are not usually allowed in here. Um, think of these spaces as a live physical catalogue. After a quick tour around the showroom, Along with a few other little bits and pieces, I even managed to find time to pop into the visitor centre and, of course, the shop. Modelling Weekly, where are we? We're in the bargain corner at Not the right. Hornby Visitor Centre. Yeah, boy. What'd you get? Just bagged a Harrier for three quid. Three pound for a Harrier? Three pound for a Harrier. <laughs> jammy, so jammy. Do you know what I got? Bolton Paul Defiant. Bolton Paul Defiant, how much paid for it? For three quid. Three quid. Three quid. Nice. <laughs> To wrap up the day, we were given a final presentation by the Humbrol team, talking about the current paint situation, new developments, and new products that they were hoping to bring to the market soon. Um, we've got a new product, um, a chipping effect, um, that's just come out, and we've just received the stock in the last week and a half, I'd say. Um, 3D printers have been around in the industry for a long time. 
Martin and I can remember using them as early as probably 94, 95. Um. And with that, the day was pretty much over. Naturally, Airfix did give us a couple of freebies, which I'll take a look at in a future video. And sadly, there was a lot of stuff that happened during the day, which sadly, there also isn't time to fit inside a 10 minute long video. So stay tuned as there may well be more stuff to come in the future. So, um, yeah, so we've just, we've just finished and we were both given two bags of stuff. I'll, uh, I'll do like a, a haul bit later. It's plenty to get your feet stuck so into. So much, I wasn't expect, like, no. I popped into the shop and I bought myself a, like a three pound kit um, because it was clearance. And I, and I, I was happy with that, but they've given us so much stuff like from today. I'm not complaining, I'm just surprised. <laughs> Yeah, how did you enjoy it? Yeah, no, I thought it was great fun. I mean, it was a, it was a nice lunch set out, you know. Lunch was all right, yeah. yeah we, you know, to your heart, through your stomach. So um, it was really well presented. There was lots of information. The guys and meeting the team was really cool. Yeah. And seeing that behind the scenes, how yeah. the film was designed. I think as you forget that they are people. Yes. And they are just, like, they are doing a job. They're very passionate about their jobs. But you, I think because you see them either on YouTube or on Instagram or on their social media posts, it's very it's corporate isn't it because it's, it's yeah. their business yeah. yeah but then you get to talk to them and you can see that they actually they care about what they're doing like Paramjit is his designs are amazing yeah completely not... there's a lot of love that is actually going into the kits now yeah like he, he thinks as a modeler himself he thinks about what he wants to build so he molds that you know like he one of the buccaneer has separately molded pipe work so that he can paint that and then add it rather than having it all as one piece and then it being difficult. So he's mm. thought about what makes things easy. So yeah, I love that. Well, yeah, so I had a, I had a, like a, a little interview with Pramjit and I also did a Sprue Talk episode. Did you? Yeah, I did one with Mike, <laughs> and, uh, Mike and Luke. Um, what did you get up to? Well, I, uh, I really enjoyed the tour. Mm. Um, we had a look around, you know, all the, all the built kits, um, you know, that was, that consisted of the whole range. Yeah, it was good. Um, I had a, Massive talk with Martin about the branding over the years. Yeah, getting right to the nitty gritty. Mm -hmm. um, the humbrol section was interesting. It's, that was definitely worth it because obviously we knew about the 3D printer coming, but this is the first time I've seen what it would look like and what they were planning to do with it. And the fact as well that they addressed the the misinformation effectively regarding the enamel pens, and that they're not gone; they're just being slightly reformulated. Yeah, they they stopped the the, the, the wholesale process for a small while while they you know you just did it around fix a bit, things up yeah <clears throat> um so yeah it's good and it's good as well to see that they are caring about uh, their customers and they're caring about progressing and improving but not just as a business but like as a community so i don't think like well 10 years ago they never did this kind of thing did they so you know i've had a lot of time cool right well we're gonna get on the road now it's been a full day it's been like nine to five there's almost a full day of driving to go <laughs> yeah we've still got like another six hours of driving to do so james is going to keep me awake with his chatter and i am not going to crash the car poor matt yeah so we will see you all later bye uh, bye bye we're waving, waving at brooke <laughs> not you we're waving at brooke where are you now bye bye <laughs> To wrap things up though, it was a very informative day. It was nice to put faces to names, particularly amongst the Airfix team and also other YouTubers that you may have only seen their hands on screen. I think for me though, one of the things that I took away from today was that it's a hobby which brings people together. Each one of us there because of a shared interest. I'd like to extend my thanks to Airfix for inviting me and putting on this YouTube Creators Day. Additionally, thanks to James from LPJ Models for accompanying me in the car and making sure that I didn't fall asleep. Right. Look at that fine specimen of a, of a content creator. Yeah. Hornby. As always, honorable mention to my patrons and channel members on the screen now for the extra support they give my channel. And if you'd like to find out more about what becoming one of these means, take a look at the links in the description. Whilst you're down below the video, let me know in the comments, what do you think of this Creators Day? And would you be interested in seeing some more things in more detail about what actually went on? Let me know. If you enjoyed this video, click that like button to help it be seen by other people with a similar interest. And if you're new here, 
and you'd like to see more videos, make sure you click the subscribe and bell icon so you never miss a modeling upload. Finally, all that's left to say is a massive thank you to you, and I'll see you on the workbench again next time. So I've just come to pick someone up, and look who it is. Hey. It's James from LPG. Oh, what am I saying there? I ruined that. <laughs> Let's try it again. Oh, why in the shot? I hope so. Oh, it's not going to focus on your money shot. Right. I've got the wrong lens on for that. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to Model Minutes. I'm Matt, and today I'm joined by Pamjit. Is that right? Kind of. Oh, come on. <laughs> right. Paramjit. Paramjit. Yeah. Paramjit. Yeah. Right. Favorite YouTuber. <laughs> uh, oh goodness! Uh, oh, 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 I don't know. Uh, have I got a gun to my head on this one? <laughs> uh, I'm taking a video of you taking a picture. All right. <laughs>